Uh, this pathogen can survive two to three years pretty comfortably when residue is left on the soil, right? But after that first year, the amount of spores almost gets cut in half. Does that, does that make sense? So the longer, longer it's surviving there, the less chance it has to, um, it has to produce spores. When it comes to dawn testing, the bigger thing to remember is all depicted on the sample. There's much more error in the sample than there is in the technology. Aerial application does work, um, but our recommendation is try to get that water up to five gallons per acre. And there's going to be a lot of, <laughs> I ask for five, I get one, you know, type of thing. I understand that. If you choose aerial application, the more water you have, the better coverage you have. And as I just mentioned with the fungicides, if you think of it that way, that's where it's your best friend. Uh, with ground application, I would say you have your ability to control how much water is out there. Certainly, you might take a few more time. You may not be equipped with it. But if I have a choice between, if I can make either a ground or aerial application, I tend to always recommend a ground application, knowing that you have more coverage. But not to say that aerial cap application can still work, but it's really important to get as much water as you can out there with it to increase your coverage. What do I do with all this high dawn seed? Good question. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm just going to touch on three things. Uh, one thing I say is separate it at the time. If you could, keep your good crop with your good crop your poor crop away from it. Certainly you could do the blending game where you could try to hedge your bets, so they call, but you could, you could uh, it's, it's a risk reward type of, a, of analogy there. And you could get by with it, but same time you could uh, uh, compromise a really good seed lot. I get questions on cleaning, and cleaning can be really effective uh, if you do have a lot of scabby kernels. Unfortunately, when you have these late season infections where you don't see those scabby kernels, they don't clean out as well, right? <laughs> Because if when you use those gravity tables, it's all based off kernel density. Uh, some trials that they did based on cleaning seed. Um, this is done a long time ago because I think the market, uh, they have 320 wheat in here. I think it was done about 15 years ago. But it was really showing this was a very high scab lot at eight, dawn, at eight parts per million to dawn. After they cleaned it out, it got down to zero to two and it was able to be marketable again. Cleaning can help, but it's not always going to give you probably the best results. There could be a lot of variability in with it. Depends on the type of scab infection that you have or when that pathogen came in. If you have a lot of tombstone kernels, the white chalky kernels, that's when you can really clean out and get rid of the get rid of the worst and keep the best. But it's not not always may not be able to even get down to levels low enough.